that's led to a fair degree of cynicism in the, in the credit community and the wider business community about the regulator's activities to, to curb this kind of behaviour. Now, so you've probably got to know what a Phoenix company is before you, um, before, you, before, you, before you can actually identify what needs to happen with, with respect to it in terms of uh, enforcement action. Now, in a report commissioned by the Fair Work Ombudsman in you know, five years ago, the definition of Phoenix activity was defined as the deliberate and systematic liquidation of a corporate trading entity which occurs with fraudulent or illegal in intention to avoid tax and other liabilities such as employee entitlements and continue the operation and profit taking of the business through another trading entity. Now, the usual suspects, ASIC and a bit of the literature has identified some of the usual Phoenix offender types. Now, the innocent offender basically involves somebody who gets in financial distress simply because they don't maintain um, appropriate managerial control and financial records. And once, once the, iceberg, the iceberg of imminent collapse occurs, they, they move the assets sideways. The second kind of Phoenix, Phoenix behaviour is basically the person who's in, at risk of engaging in Phoenix activities simply by dint of their uh, occupation. Now you're looking at people such, I'm talking there about people such as tradesmen, they probably haven't got any other alternative but to start a business in, a, in the same industry because that's their only means of earning a livelihood. Now the careerist is the, the individual who's aware of the law and makes a conscious decision to behave in a way that defeats their creditors. Now this is the type of Phoenix behaviour that should be regulated and discouraged, discouraged as it's damaging to the economy and it's anti-competitive. For instance, a serial offender is able to rack up debts, um, for instance, to the ATO and other taxes and he doesn't end up paying them, whereas, and in that way he gets a competitive advantage from other participants in the industry. The report sought to quantify um, the effect of um, uh, Phoenix activity on the uh, on the Australian economy. Now, the, the effect of the Phoenix activity is a num number of is, an, is a number of circumstances. Obviously, you've got circumstances where employees are potentially not paid. You've got circumstances where taxes, where government taxes and charges aren't being paid. You've got uh, creditors who or creditors and suppliers who provided goods and services and they're not getting paid for it and you've got potential customers who don't receive uh, goods and services as well. It's a, the report suggested that it's a fairly broad um, loss to the economy and it's a fairly broad range, but the report suggested that it's in the vicinity of 1.78 to $3.19 billion per annum. Now, as, as, I, as I alluded to earlier, the ATO, ASIC, and, and some of the state revenue authorities, they've been particularly vigilant in this area over the last 12, 12 to 18 months. Uh, they've, been, they've been issuing, uh, and the ATO in particular has been issuing search warrants on uh, suspected Phoenix, um, uh, and they've been prosecuting suspected Phoenix operators. And I guess the other thing is they're not only targeting the directors, they're targeting the advisors. So there's been examples of some advisors to this who've been prosecuted, um, and, and, and that's in the Gold Coast. And I guess you can probably it's probably it's also probably occupied a bit of a space in the media as well. You might have seen the 7:30 report in uh, Four Corners has uh, probably chased down a few of few of the few of these advisors in this area as well. So obviously it's a hot button topic with the regulators, and. Um, this is, uh, the government has uh, just recently announced another range of reforms for <laughs> consideration and for consultation with respect to the area. And as I said, this is hot off the press. Kelly O'Dwyer announced this on the 13th of September. And these are being, <coughs> some, of, some of the things are uh, being considered. And I won't, I won't go through them all. Um, Probably some of the more significant ones are the introduction of a director identification number. The idea is 
that is that all uh, government agencies can track uh, specific directors and relationships between individuals, entities, and other people. <coughs> so basically they can identify that uh, serial offender sooner and uh, put a stop to their behaviour. A couple more contentious ones in the list there are um, the ATO getting a security deposit from suspected Phoenix operators um, with respect to outstanding tax liabilities. Now, obviously I'm, I'm not sitting there in the head of the ATO, but I imagine how that would work is that they've identified somebody who's got a track record of um, having companies um, being closed down with not paying paying their liabilities in, cir in circumstances where they started up, started up in similar entities and similar enterprises. So essentially, and this is the contentious bit, so essentially they require an upfront security deposit before they register the new entity. Um, the alternate to that, the alternate, I guess, argument to that is that, uh, you know, we're talking about the safe harbour on the other side and I, I was talking about the safe harbour and that's all, to, all about encouraging innovation. A concept like that doesn't necessarily encourage innovation and the, you know, being the opportunity to fail just one time. And I guess the other thing that, that is on the horizon, which is probably a, a significant reform, and one, one suspects the ATO has been looking, up, looking for this for some time, is making person, a director's personal liable for GST liabilities and include, including that in the uh, director's penalty notice for a penalty notice regime. As I said before, at, at the moment, um, directors can be rendered personal liable for withholding tax, stuff like that, PAYG and superannuation. But obviously, unpaid GST is. Uh, is the next is the next frontier from the ATO, and one suspects they've pro they probably tried to do that the last time uh, the director's penalty uh, regime was um, amended. So submissions with respect to that close on the twenty seventh of twenty seventh of October. So if you've got thoughts with respect to that, it's uh, time to get cracking with your cracking with your pens. Um, Thanks, that probably brings us to a conclusion of today's proceedings. Um, if you've got any questions about any of that, 